Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Place, and welcome to another edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. As you know, Nonprofit Spotlight is a production of the Volunteer Advisory Committee here at Community Television. And every uh, episode, we highlight uh, nonprofits in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz County, doing wonderful, wonderful work. And uh, this program, we're really fortunate to have uh, Save Our Shores, which everybody knows about, and uh, the executive director, uh, Erica Donnelly Greenan. Welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, Erica, uh, yeah, I was uh, just talking earlier about uh, you have big shoes to fill, uh, Catherine O'Day before you, Laura Casa before her. It's uh, really one of the one of the great uh, positions to have in, in the community to really have such profound effect on being a steward of the National Marine Sanctuary. Uh, tell people a little bit about yourself and kind of how you how you came to uh, to be with Save Our Shores. Yes. Oh, thank you for that intro. I, you know, I definitely have some big shoes to fill and um, I, you know, I'm hoping I can do it, all that I can to make sure that this organization keeps moving forward. Um, so yeah, it was an honor. I joined in the middle of September and I'm coming from primarily a research background with mixed oh. in some other um, outreach consulting, um, some citizen science program management, and then some people management back in my my days before my um, scientific work. Um, mm -hmm. And so coming into this position, I'm pretty excited to bring all of those, uh, all that background all together into one place instead of, um, you know, trying to skip around and figure out what's next in terms of contract work or research work. And right. so this is an amazing opportunity, and it's such a um, well-established nonprofit in the community. And, um, you know, I'm coming from the research background, but something that's always really driven me is um, how to get the community involved and how to get people excited about what the science is telling us and how does that translate into real life and how we mm -hmm. apply it. Um, and being able to do that in the local community and within the connected communities as well, I think is so important. And that's something that um, I'm very excited to do with Save Our Shores. Well, wonderful. It's great to have you. I noticed as I was looking at your website and people should go go to saveourshores.org and not only make a donation if you like, but also if we talk about something you find or uh, put your interest uh, to volunteer to do some work. But I noticed that it says that uh, your favorite marine activities are wildlife viewing, getting in the water, beach running, and beach lounging. So you're eminently qualified to be in the position that you are. And, uh, Thank but, you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. As you may know, this uh, program, Nonprofit Spotlight, will be on our playlist pretty much immediately. And then it'll play at various times during the year. So it's what we call evergreen. But we certainly can talk about uh, upcoming beach and river cleanups and things that people can really get involved with and then maybe you talk a little bit about the training for sanctuary stewards and that kind of thing so so tell us kind of what's coming up for save our shores uh, as we go into the new year yeah you know so we're kind of in this phase as you would imagine with a new leader of um regrouping and replanning you know what what is save our shores about um what do, what have we been doing and what do we want to continue to do moving into the future um, you know, certainly um, beach cleanups are still needed. Um, we are always going to be doing that in the community as long as they're needed. Um, but we're looking to make that more of a way to connect people to the issue at hand, not the kind of one and done, you know, come out and clean up, did your part, see you later. We're really hoping that that's just step one with community members and also connected communities as well. And really making that land to sea connection. So people are seeing um, that, you know, this is a problem, not just within our local community, but um, we're all connected. All these ecosystems are connected. And so how do we help one and one another, um, especially the communities that are dealing with um, with more pollution than others? And so how do we come together and make sure that we're we're helping um, each other out? And so we'll definitely be focusing on cleanups, um, but also our education programs will keep ramping up. Um, at the moment, we're, you know, coming out of or still dealing with the global pandemic. So that's right. been changing about, you know, how much time we can spend in classrooms. But the goal is to um, really get kids out on the beaches, especially in um, communities where beach access may be a little bit difficult. And so we're hoping to bridge the gap there so that we can mm -hmm. bring all youth out to beaches. Yeah. Um, on the opposite end, um, it connects people, it connects kids to, um, to, to marine protected areas, but we're also doing a virtual reality um, educational program with the headsets that really connects oh, kids to how to dive under the water, what it mm -hmm. looks like in our marine protected areas, some historical information. 
And so, of course, that's not looking to replace getting kids out on the beaches, but it's a way to um, give them the um, a little bit of a diving experience and what it looks like and why it's important to protect these areas. And so those are our two main ed education programs at the moment, and we're looking to build those up a bit. Um, and then, of course, we're going to continue our advocacy work um, focused on um, kind of we're kind of revamping about, you know, are we going to were we going to continue this bottle, um, plastic bottle petition, or are we going to pivot a little bit, um, focus on microfibers? I'd really love to get, um, I'd really love to get some more reuse and um, connect some of our local eateries and restaurants to these great new opportunities and uh, businesses that are getting reusables set up in local eateries so that we're um, really hitting that plastic pollution and that waste right at the source, right? And, yeah. um, and these opportunities are um, not only good for the environment, but they're also uh, money savers and they're good business-wise. And so, yeah. you know, bringing some more different expertise and communities together to help start working together to bring these things into um, fruition, I think is, is so important. And so that's what we'll be working on. And then, of course, there'll be more. <laughs> but that's just like a little bit. Um, as far as trainings, you had mentioned, yeah, we're excited. You know, part of the rebuild. Um, you know, we're all still dealing with this pandemic as a community connected community. So, so tell me, Erica, if I don't mind uh, interrupting you, how is uh, yeah, the pandemic and the continuing need for social distancing kind of impacting your ability not only to have beach and river cleanups, but also to be able to conduct uh, uh, trainings and be able to pursue your advocacy, plastic pollution, for instance? Yeah, no, that's a great question, Steve, because that's, you know, that's definitely impacted a lot of the um, activities we've been able to do in person, you know, um, as you would imagine. And so when, uh, for instance, that bottle petition went out back in, I think it was either late 2019 or early 2020, um, you know, part of that was gathering a lot of signatures. And so that was right. put on the back burner with the pandemic. And so a lot of um, even our education outreach really had to be revamped in a way where it was virtual and it was accessible to students, educators and teachers um, safely. And so, um, yeah, all of our programs, you know, as you would expect, have been a, a bit impacted, including, um, you know, the number of active volunteers that we have at the moment. And so we're still conducting beach cleanups and those type of activities safely. And, you know, we, we feel that we can follow protocols and make sure that people's safety is taken into consideration and, you know, distancing when needed. Um, any activities inside, of course, masked. Um, but, you know, part of that is reestablishing who's, who's still active in our community as a volunteer and wants to volunteer. Right. Yeah. And so we're going through that process now because a lot of people have been impacted in ways that, um, you know, has either changed their availability or, you know, they just no longer have the bandwidth or if they've moved out of the area. Right. And so we're really trying to see who, who's still around, who wants to be a part of this, um, this volunteer effort. And so we are doing our steward training uh, refresher in January for those that are already um, sanctuary stewards. But Which is something that I should take advantage of. I always keep saying I'm going to do Absolutely. it. You know, I've been a steward since 2008, I guess now. I'm always thinking, well, I need to be refreshed for sure. You know? Yes, Steve, please join us. Yes. So that's on our website. Um, there's information on how to sign up. Um, and then the goal is to recruit new and um, new sanctuary stewards as well. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll be putting that volunteer training into uh going live in uh february so i'm trying to think of what the, the date was the date escapes right. but we'll be starting in february and it will likely be a four to five week training um a couple hours each week as a way to really establish a good uh training protocol get you connected make sure you're feeling good and then we all work together to get everyone out there on the beaches and um taking part in cleanups and outreach and all, all sorts of things. We yeah. have no, you know, no shortage of work for volunteers. Oh, yeah. Come join us. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, do you uh, project that the February training and people who want to know more about this, certainly they can again to go to your website, saveworkshores.org, wonderful website, you know, tons of information, lots of opportunities to really get engaged. And believe me, uh, it's no surprise to you or to me that Santa Cruz is such an engaged community about a number of issues, but particularly about protection of the National Marine Sanctuary. But uh, do you see that that's uh, at any time going to be an in-person training or you're uh, you thinking about it being virtual uh, in February? You know, the goal right now is to keep it in person. We'll wow. have to, you know, we'll have to 
keep in line with, uh, of course, safety measures and, you know, based on what our state, county and city are saying we can do. Um, remains to be seen. You know, I, I think as we are getting into 2022, we're all very excited to do things in person, of course, and to connect Absolutely. again. Yeah. But um, we certainly want to keep everybody safe and healthy um, and in compliance with the health rules. So, um, yeah, the goal right now is to have it be live, but we might have to pivot to something virtual. Depending That'd on be wonderful. I can recall that uh, one of the, and uh, we were mentioning this, uh, one of the best parts, I think, of my becoming a sanctuary steward was taking the training. And it was like a mini uh, marine biology you know, university yeah, class. Yes. It was so engrossing. And there was so much information. And it was nice there to be there with all your fellow perspective, you know, sanctuary stewards, yes. and get that kind of camaraderie and community that to really you build as a sanctuary steward. I love that. Yeah. And that, you know, that's really the base work of the community aspect, right? It's really feeling that connection to the work itself, the ecosystem, your community members, the extended communities. It, it, to me, that's where the real work happens, right? When you really see that we can, we have to work together to make progress. And mm -hmm. I love that you got that feeling from the, from oh, the training absolutely. because that's so important. And, you know, creating those connections is really where it's at. That's where we get the real work done. And I hope it, you know, there's so much to work on out there. I, I hope um, we can see and tell stories in a way that there's hope that, you know, we, we can come together and make a big difference. It's not all doom and gloom. <laughs> you know, I know sometimes it can feel really overwhelming with all the um, ecosystem and social, social issues we're all, you know, dealing with. And so I think in bringing people together, we can, uh, we can really work together and, and keep that positivity and optimistic approach to uh, making a difference. Yeah. One of the things that I enjoyed most uh, when I was more active, of course, than I am now was doing the Beach River cleanups, as you were mentioning, with uh, school age children. You know, yeah. the wonder, you know, in their eyes and the, the, the joy that they take in being, you know, not only at the beach and by the ocean, but also assuming the roles as young protectors of the marine sanctuary is really uh, something that you can't duplicate, I don't think, in any other way in, 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 in the community. So it's something that's so important to be able to do. Absolutely. And to me, you know, that's that's the point, right? It, you know, the as adults, we should be doing the heavy lifting for what needs to be taken care of. But we should really be connecting youth with, um, you know, their their world and their ecosystems and their communities and and helping them, setting them up for a successful future. Um, and so, like you said, it's like connecting with kids is just that optimism, that that drive, that energy they have. And, you know, we really need to support that and encourage it. Um, and help them along the way as yeah. well. That doesn't mean we should sit back and say, well, that future is going to, that generation is going to save the future. We need to do it with them and make sure that they're set up for success. And once again, uh, people can go to sailorshores.org, make a donation if they like, and we urge you to do that. One of the wonderful opportunities that we have doing nonprofit spotlight is to, you know, give people an opportunity to see what the great work that nonprofits are doing, but also to become engaged, not only financially, but also uh, personally, and, and do some of that work. Uh, you were just coming uh, into uh, the executive director's position in September, you say, which Correct. is right about the time that you did your wonderful, you know, annual coastal cleanup, which I was fortunate enough again to be a captain of the Mitchell Cove site, so I love being involved with that. But uh, that. just for people who aren't familiar with the great work and the fan, you know, just a fantastic effort that is, re Recap that a little bit for people. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So actually the annual coastal cleanup, um, that was my first week of work oh, with Sacred uh -huh. <laughs> Stars. It was great. Great introduction. Um, yeah. yeah, there was so much energy and so much, um, you know, like I mentioned before, that community collaboration. I love that. That's so energizing to me because that's where the real work gets done. Um, and so that was my, um, I shouldn't, you know, I shouldn't say my first cleanup because it wasn't, but it was my first um, participation in the annual coastal cleanup. Mm -hmm. And it was a su success. I mean, there was so much energy out on the beaches, um, even as volunteers and, and um, uh site managers were coming back and giving us the data and their their um their different collections and that sort of thing their materials there was such a like positive energy that they had done this amazing work they connected with people it was a beautiful day it was just overall a success and so i i really hope that that really plants the seed you know as we get more and more people involved that that's just the starting point of like wow we really made a difference today how do we keep this going how do we keep that snowballing and other activities and other impacts 
um, that are positive. So um, yeah, it was great. That was a great introduction to the to my new position, and um, I'm grateful to take part this year. And it's interesting that uh, the annual coastal cleanup is, is uh, become a, like a legacy event in the community. I can recall the one year I did the uh, beach cleanup, uh, the annual cleanup at the Natural Bridges, and the fellow who was there, the, the, the captain, had been doing it for 16 years. Wow. <laughs> He's been there, you know, for <laughs> that length of time doing it because he loved Natural Bridges and he loved the work and he loved being involved. That's the kind of uh, community commitment we have, I think, to save our shores. Yes. And again, the overall protection of the National Marine Sanctuary. Yes. I mean, that's so important. And, you know, I, I think that's what's so amazing about this community and our connected communities is there's just a, a legitimate love to take care of um to not just where we live in our, our environment and our backyard, but also mm -hmm. the bigger picture and how it all connects, right? So if we take care of our community, also how can we take care of those connected communities and just see how it's all one big ecosystem and we're all reliant on one another. Um, and so to me, like living in a, in a, a place where so many people really wanna make a positive difference is just amazing. So grateful to you know, be a part of that kind of community. You were mentioning earlier about uh, advocacy. I know that uh, uh, I've always been uh, a great supporter of your plastic pollution campaign over time. And uh, you think that uh, perhaps there would be an opportunity to revisit the petition or change or strengthen the advocacy for overall uh, plastic pollution abatement at some point as we move forward? Oh, absolutely. Yes, we're going to be, of course, you know, mitigation of plastic pollution will always be a part of what Save Our Shores works on. Um, and so we will be revisiting that bottle petition. If, you know, if we decide that perhaps that effort didn't quite go in the direction we needed it to go, we're going to alter it in a way that will be more productive or, or more impactful. So that's really the goal is to make sure that we're spending our time and energy in a place where it can have the most positive impact. Um, yeah, I had brought up the microfiber mitigation because um, that's something that, you know, our ecosystems and our, all our communities are dealing with are the microfibers that are coming off of our clothing items and, and other things mm -hmm. going through our wash. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it's, it's really just taking a look at what the most current need is and how we can best mitigate that issue, especially in our immediate community, community and, you know, get, make sure that we can um, start there and then amplify that effort out. Right. Um, and so, yeah, Save Our Shores will always be working to mitigate plastic pollution. That's never going to go away until we don't have plastic pollution. <laughs> until we don't. Yeah, the, hopefully that day will come. Uh, yeah. You were saying, of course, we're talking about uh, the restrictions for social distancing as we kind of work our way through uh, the hopefully the tail end of the pandemic. Um, do you think that perhaps uh, you're the advocates for Save Our Shores and your staff or and yourself will be able to get back uh, back into the, in the classrooms a little bit? Uh, I can recall back in the day they used to do some classroom presentations that were just outstanding and the, and the kids just love them. Yeah, yes. Actually, you know, right now um, our program manager and program associate, they are in, in some of the classrooms where um, where the uh in the, uh, what am I trying to say? In the areas where they are allowing people to come into the classroom. Uh -huh. So we're, yeah. you know, we're just following each school's protocol and making sure that we're being safe. Um, so absolutely, the goal is to bring that back 100% um, as we get into a, a safer space, um, you know, as we um, hopefully wind down the pandemic in time. Um, but we will also be, you know, having some educational programs that are available virtually for, for those people or those um, areas that we can't get to all the time. So we, we, we definitely foresee there being a hybrid, you know, where sure. we'll be in classrooms and then um, some educators will have the option to use some of our um, educational resources and tools by going to our website or contacting us and we would help um, get that, those to those educators. Right. Tell us a little more about uh, the, the the virtual training. Uh, that that sounds fantastic. Oh, the virtual reality. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so this program um, it is a way to learn about marine protected areas. So you know the kids use the Oculus headsets. Um, mm -hmm. And this was my first forte <laughs> into using virtual reality. I, I know that makes me feel dated, but you know that's just, you know a lot of the youth are, have been using these programs, and so we thought. Um, you know, this is something my predecessor had been working on prior, so I cannot take credit for this program. It was amazing. I stepped into it as, as it was already coming into its final um, phases. Mm -hmm. Right now, the um, our educational program 
staff and uh, pr program manager are now taking that into classrooms and, and pilot studying it with some kids to see um, what they learned, um, if it's actually impactful and if they enjoyed it. And so the goal is to expand that out and make sure that we can bring that VR program to as many schools as possible. And so for that, we're, of course, we're always looking for support, um, community support through donations, if possible, we're doing some grant writing to make sure we can keep that program going. Um, and so, yeah, we're excited to see where, where that goes and then to also expand on it. So, you know, once you have the program written, you can bring it to a bunch of different um, schools and classrooms. And then over time, of course, we'll have to build on that and give them um, steps up to, um, okay, now you know about marine protected areas and then what's the next step. Well, it's a wonderful program. Uh, it sounds terrific. And again, if people would like to uh, go to saveworkshirts.org and donate uh, to the organization, you know, these wonderful programs don't uh, happen in a vacuum. There's a, there's a, there's a financial okay. component to all of this, and you, you as executive director, you know, that feel that uh, more than, than oh, anyone. Yeah. But oh, it's yeah. really important for the community, really, to uh, to not only participate, but to contribute to this. And, and Santa Cruz uh, is such a wonderful and generous community that uh, hopefully we'll get uh, the money to be able to do these things. Uh, what's kind of your vision? You're coming on board now, you've been in September, maybe getting your feet on the ground a little bit. Uh, kind of what would be your personal vision for uh, Save Our Shores as we kind of move into a uh, changing uh, climate, uh, changing uh, landscape of, of past the pandemic and more into community involvement? Yeah, that's such a great question and something that everyone's been asking, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, of course. So, of course, that's all coming, you know, those plans are kind of coming together as um, we're getting into the new year. We're going to be meeting with the board. What I really foresee is um, it's something that I've been, you know, mentioning a lot during our conversation here is really how do we connect better with different communities and also with other nonprofits so that there's more a collaboration um, I always do this kind of Venn diagram with my hands because to me, there's so many great people and communities and nonprofits working on um, different aspects that are needed in the community. But how do we come together to make sure that we're having the best impact possible, mm -hmm. not just for our own backyard, but also for all the connected communities and the areas that perhaps need more assistance. And so that's really the goal. Um, I think moving forward is that more of that connectivity, less spinning our wheels separately and more coming together so that we can actually make an improvement. Um, something else that I had in mind kind of left my brain, unfortunately, as I was speaking. Well, that's a perfect time to do it. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Um, uh, now, are you collaborating with the Coastal Watershed Council and those folks uh, who are doing the kind of the watershed work? Yes, actually, I, I need to connect with them again and um, see where we're going um, into the future. But absolutely, in terms of river cleanups and th those types of efforts, I would love to connect with them and make sure um, that, you know, where we're doing cleanups have the biggest impact. And, and so that's the whole point, right, is to spend our, our time and energy in areas that actually need the cleanups. And absolutely, we'll be collaborating with them. And I, one of the things that I always appreciated about Save Our Shores uh, was their sensitivity to uh, to all the different uh, communities uh, in, in our community, one of which is the houseless community. And every time that we ever did a beach river cleanup, that Save Our Shores was extremely respectful uh, of yeah. the people who by, by dint of their conditions, had to live outdoors, but we're along the rivers or, or near the beaches and whatnot. So I really appreciate that. Has uh, the, the, the latest kind of upswell in, in tent camping and uh, people uh, living kind of along the rivers affected your ability to really get in and do your, your river and beach cleanups at all? Um, you know, I'm still navigating that a bit to see if it has uh -huh. been impactful, especially being new. Um, and like you mentioned, we certainly want to be respectful and know that it's a very complicated issue as to why, you know, why we're dealing with that in our community um, and want to be respectful of people. Um, and then we also want to make sure that, you know, we're doing our best to, to have the lowest impact on the environment as possible. And so, you know, that's where it becomes a challenge. And we're definitely committed as a nonprofit to working with other nonprofits, with government entities to make sure that, you know, we're being respectful, but that we're also um, figuring out ways and solutions to some of these issues that we're seeing um, to the best that we can, of course. And it definitely takes communities coming together and being understanding about where people are um, and why they're dealing with these problems. And, and so, yeah, our, our goal is to, um, to keep moving forward and do our best and, um, 
you know, be respectful of all human life that is um, within our communities and know that people are dealing with a lot right now. Well, that's something that uh, I think people really respect and admire about St. Louis Shores is their real feeling of being part of the community. And uh, that's why you know, people love Say Wear Shorts and have, you know, for the, as long as I have been aware of their existence and preceding that, certainly. Um, I love that. Have you been able to kind of reach out to uh, some of the other uh, you know, gatekeepers and people who are doing uh, policy and uh, work on, on in the environment in your capacity as executive director? Yeah, you know, we're starting to make those connections now, especially as I've jumped in this position. And also, um, you know, a lot of the uh, the work that Save Our Shores does is also through um, coalitions. And so especially if you're thinking of more like the policy and the lobbying aspect, we do that work through our coalitions. Um, and those often um, mm -hmm. have you know, government entities in them, as well as other nonprofits and academic entities as well. Um, yeah, and the goal here too, you know, it's something that, that's the part that left my brain when I was mentioning it is I, I definitely want to strengthen that, you know, I'm coming from that research background. I want to connect the, um, the research entity and the research um, information to the community in the best way possible and bring it to different communities in a way that's relevant to them, to their lives. And how, how do we bridge that gap between the scientific knowledge and the community action that we're taking every day and why we take these actions, right? We need this bigger picture view of why we do what we do um, and to get people involved in a way that is relevant to them and their lives and their families. I think that's very important. Well, it's wonderful to talk to you, Erica, and uh, you really bring a wealth of experience, but also uh, a somewhat different perspective, I think, uh, as we are shifting in, in different times, uh, require different solutions and different approaches. And certainly uh, you seem like someone who is ready to make those uh, those challenging decisions to move Save Our Shores forward. We've got about a minute left. Anything else you'd like to tell folks? Again, saveourshores.org, a donation, volunteer, take a look at that wonderful website. Yes, please. Like you mentioned, take a look at our website. Um, we just want to call the community to help in any way they can, whether that be through donations or through your time. We'd love to see you out there and connect with you and do good work together. And people should uh, maybe sign up now for the, uh, the Beach River cleanups coming in January. Are you doing any between now and then? Um, we're done, I think, for the rest of the year. Um, okay. Staff taking a little break, but yeah, there's lots of uh, signups on our event calendar on the website. So yeah, please take a look and join us. There's lots of opportunity. Wonderful, Erica Donnelly Green, and thank you so much for uh, for coming and talking to us here at Nonprofit Spotlight. And welcome to our community. You know, you're a wonderful addition. You know, uh, we really need uh, your leadership and your energy uh, to guide Save Our Shores. Uh, such an important feature of our community and such an important uh, job and role is to protect our national marine sanctuary. Thanks again for everything. We hope to be talking to you again uh, down, the, down the road and uh, have a very happy new year and take care of yourself. Thank you so much, Steve. Have a great holiday and happy holidays to all our communities and connected communities. Thank you, Erica. Thanks again, people, for tuning in. This has been Nonprofit Spotlight. Our uh, next program, we will be highlighting another uh, Santa Cruz a nonprofit doing wonderful, wonderful work, just like our own Save Our Shores. See you next time. Mm -hmm.